Welcome to our friends around the world, to Accurator's solutions to the five most common problems in dental 3D printing. My name is Jacques Strubel, sales manager at Accurator Technologies, and we have a very special program for you today. First, we have Dr. Nakul Rati out of Houston, followed by Dr. Tom Shao out of Australia, and then a very special guest, Dr. Rick Ferguson, implant educator in the US. Many of you know him already from the Facebook group, Dental 3D Printing Group, with over 14,000 members. So if you haven't joined already, please do. There's a lot of good information there. Dr. Rick Ferguson will be going through a guide to creating in-house hybrids. And this will be followed by a Q&A where Dr. Rick Ferguson will join us. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our founder and CEO, Ayush Bagla. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing all today? So I'd like to say um, it's a pleasure to be in front of you all today and talk to you more about the, the five solutions that we've made to common problems in dental 3D printing. So starting off by saying, hey, you know, all of us would like something that works fast, it works accurate, you know, it's affordable, it's easy to use, it's streamlined, and hey, don't we want all that? However, most of the solutions that we've seen in the market are, don't really have those things. Either they have the accuracy or they have the speed. Usually they don't have both. So, and if they do, they're usually too expensive and out of reach for most of the clients. Now, Moving ahead, you know, most of the products don't have the consistent performance that you'd need for, um, you know, production type of workflow. And the other aspect with that is if they could be used, they're not very convenient to be used. And, you know, think about what your time is worth to you. Think about the amount of work that is required to do the calibration. So it's, it's quite a...
most of the products don't have the consistent performance that you'd need to basically use it for um, you know production type of workflow and the other aspect with that is if they could be used they're not very convenient to be used and you know think about what your time is worth to you think about the amount of work that is required to do the calibration so it's it's quite a bit actually to take in for an average user uh, who's not very sure about a lot of these things and um, usually if the products are inconvenient to use they run into support issues and it may take more than a couple of days to basically fix the support problems and you know get back up and running and the loss of revenue may be a bit too much for uh, a business to hold uh, so considering these four points there's no streamlined solution that we see currently in the market um, to solve this kind of uh, ecosystem and now i'd like to talk about the soul and what we've done with it to to make it uh, solve the problems uh, for the industry so with the advanced monochrome LCD technology, hey, it's a cool name, I know, uh, but what does it actually do? With that, we're able to increase the speed of the printer uh, by about three times compared to an RGB screen. And um, the durability of the printer is a lot longer because the LCD life is uh, about 10 times more than a traditional uh, LCD that you would find on a printer. Now. Along with the LCD, we need a really good backlight uh, technology to go with it, which is something we've made. And we have over 95% uniformity in our backlight technology. All this is cool and, you know, it's a lot of terms and a lot of technical details. But what does it mean for you, who's the user? Very simple. You could produce a full arch case within 35 to 45 minutes consistently, accurately and reliably. So. A um, few more points that I'd like to talk about with the Soul is that you have a plug-and-play zero calibration system. And with a plug-and-play zero calibration system, basically, you don't have to calibrate the Z-axis. You don't have to calibrate the resins. It's pretty much pour and print. So it's as easy as that. And, you know, um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the Alpha 3D software. So in the Alpha 3D software that we have over here, we have application-specific workflows. And using those application specific workflows, we are basically able to design a full arch case, for example, in under one minute. And that makes it really easy for any new user to jump into 3D printing, uh, especially with this software. Now to guide people on that process, we have more than 25 tutorial and operational videos to help customers actually use the product. And uh, the product's available in nine languages. So uh, pretty much a global audience could use it plug and play without having to worry about what they're doing with it, right? So as I touched upon a bit earlier uh, with the support and, you know, to get tech support and to solve certain problems, it may take a couple of days uh, to get answers and figure out what the issue is. However, with the Soul, we're able to uh, produce a remote diagnostic system inside the machine, which basically detects what the issue is uh, and tells us, you know, how we can go about solving it. Um, okay, excellent. So to follow up from here, I would like to talk about the materials that we've uh, calibrated with the system. We have over a hundred biocompatible materials that are already pre-calibrated with the soul. So imagine how much time it would take an end user like yourself to calibrate those materials on your own from industry leaders like Keystone, like Dentona, like Bago. The possibilities are unimaginable because today with this package you're able to plug and play over a hundred materials from these companies uh, without any effort so it's it's really as easy as that so you know now i'd like to talk about dr nakul radi we had the pleasure of meeting him in houston earlier this year from easy dental clinic and you know easy dental implants is the name of his company you must check him out on social media and uh, his facebook page to see what he's doing a real thought leader in the space of uh, implantology and uh, dentures he's a prosthodontist by profession so um, you know, uh, he, he's going to touch base on what we did with the soul in his clinic as we performed two full arch cases in one day. And I'll let him, um, you know, give his impressions on that. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Dr. Nakul Rati. I'm a prosthodontist here in Houston. And 
I want to thank uh, Ayush and his team today. Uh, they came uh, to our office, Easy Dental, and we had the chance to play with this uh, new toy, the Soul. Uh, uh, we did two full arch cases today and uh, got the guides printed, uh, really nice clear material, and then did the guided surgery, fabricated printed prosthesis, and delivered it on the same day. So. Uh, exciting new machine. Uh, we have a lot of printers in our office and uh, this one would probably be a great addition to our our uh, our workhorse. It, it was very predictable. The print was less than an hour for the prosthesis, less than an hour for the uh, guide. So something which would turn our same day dentistry protocol uh, really efficiently. So thank you. Thank you, Team Akerada, for being here. Super. I'm glad you, you enjoyed watching those things. So, you know, let me ask you all a question. Like he said, the product's really accurate. It's really fast. How did we get there? What did Accurata do? So here I would like to introduce a bit of a technology that we created in-house at Accurata after years and years of R&D, which we proudly call the dynamic optical engine. And essentially with the dynamic optical engine, a regular 3D printer has a light distribution that's uh, very wide and um, it's illuminating light in areas across the build platform where you, even you're not printing. And because of that, we're gonna have um, curing, a little bit of curing in certain places where you don't want it to cure. And with the soul, we are having something that can cure only in some specific areas where you basically um, need it to cure. So uh, it's much easier with this to ensure that your prints are more consistent and your life of your printer is a lot higher. Super. So I'd like to talk about Dr. Tom Shaw, our friend from Down Under. And uh, he's basically been, um, you know, using the soul to produce full mouth cases. And uh, he's done a great job with um, the product. And I'd like you to hear about his impressions and what it's done for him and his business. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Tom Shaw. I'm from the Gold Coast in Australia. Today, I'd just like to share with you guys my experience so far with the Accurate Soul 3D printer. So I received probably the first unit in Australia about five weeks ago. Um, the day that um, we received the unit, we were quite excited to get our hands on it. We've previously had some really good experiences with Authentic and the Soul promises to be better. So. My nurses unpacked the uh, printer and uh, to test the nature of the claim of the printer being a plug and play unit, we decided to, without doing anything else, uh, just to mount one of our um, existing dental models that we designed uh, straight into the printer and see how it goes. And what do you know, it printed flawlessly. So within um, 10 minutes of receiving the package, we started our first kind of successful print. So that was pretty impressive. Normally, um, you know, there's a bunch of calibrations you've got to do with a new unit or a bunch of screws you've got to tighten and fine tune. Um, none of that with the sole, which kind of surprised me. In terms of speed of print, the sole easily compares with the best of them. Um, it's probably comparable to something that you might know, the Asiga. Um, the quality of print is also excellent. It's probably amongst the best um, best quality and precise prints I've seen. So the difference between the sole versus some of the other printers, uh, you might ask. The user interface is quite a modern, intuitive user interface. It's a very user-friendly system. Um, it, it is truly plug and play, even for a novice uh, user. Um, I would feel quite comfortable recommending that uh, product to a, a novice user. We all know we as dental professionals, um, time is valuable to us. So what 
is really important to me when I'm recommending a printer is how predictable can the technology be? I don't want some, someone with limited technology to spend their weekend tinkering with the hardware um, just to get something printed successfully. And, and I think the Soul is probably one of the easiest printers to get working predictably. So that's a big plus for me. Um, My findings of the Soul so far is bulletproof. I don't remember, and I'm pretty sure we haven't had a single failed print. Um, and we use this thing every day. Excellent. So you see at Accurata, we don't just sell printers. Uh, we are a solutions company that has a complete ecosystem of solutions like you see here, starting from the Alpha 3D to the printers, to the uh, resins, the cleaning unit and the curing unit. And with this entire eco solution, ecosystem that fits in one table over here, we're able to actually perform same day dentistry of not the future anymore, but the present. And we're able to actually use those things to uh, produce all these lovely applications. And I would now hand it over to Dr. Rick Ferguson, who is one of the most respected names in the world of digital dentistry, who's the founder of the Dental 3D Printing Group on Facebook. Um, and uh, he would give you his impressions of how he's used the soul in his workflow to create you know, a game changing uh, performance for um, his uh, patients. And after that, I would love to welcome all of you to our Q&A. Please feel free to write in and, you know, we're going to work through that and answer your questions as best as possible. And um, yeah, I hand it over to Rick. Testing 3D printers for accuracy, um, I use a standard temporary hybrid uh, that I have designed using ExoCAD. So in this case, um, we're designing a, a hybrid uh, using a stone model that was produced from a standard open tray impression technique. And the scan bodies are actually the cover caps for the multi-unit abutments. So we scan the multi-unit abutments and then design the temporary hybrid um, in ExaCAD and then we can export that file and print it on a 3D printer. And then in this particular case, we are actually designing it so that it goes directly to the multi-unit abutments, which eliminates the intermediary tie bases. Um, we can check the fit of the, uh, the hybrid by screwing it directly to the stone model, which was our original reference stone model. So you can see here, everything's been designed. This is the green file, which you see here on the screen now is the uh, final design that's going to be exported as an STL file. And we will print this on the Accurator sole and check the fit of this prosthesis on the reference stone model. We're now going to look at the Alpha 3D software. This is a slicing software that comes with the Accurate Soul. Uh, the first step in is to open the software and then just basically drag and drop the model over onto the build platform as depicted in the software. So we're going to position the model um, and it's important that we position the model uh, that it, so that it will print with the highest level of accuracy which in my opinion means rotating the model so that the surface that we want with the highest level of accuracy, which in this case is the areas that are going to attach to the multi-unit abutments, is actually going to be printing uh, upright. In other words, um, they're at the top of the image as it looks here in the software. It's actually going to be printed upside down. So it'll, it's actually going to be the bottom of the model. The next thing we're going to do is choose the quality or the layer thickness. Um, and in this case, we're going to choose a layer thickness of 0.1 millimeters. There's no reason to print at a higher resolution than this for a temporary hybrid. So this is considered uh, in the software standard. So we'll choose a standard mode here. 
and then we'll have to do the supports. One of the great things about Alpha 3D software is that it's so easy to uh, add the supports. Now, there are going to be some manual changes that I'll make, but in essence, there are presets for the different types of, the, of uh, dental appliances. You can see here the, the supports have been added. One thing we'll want to do is edit the location of the supports, although the software is smart enough to add the supports, it's not smart enough to know what actual type of model you have based on your individual model. So we're going to look at this by clicking on the manual tab to change the manual position of the supports. And what we're going to do here is actually delete any of the support points that are going to attach within the screw access holes. We want those screw access holes to have a very high level of accuracy with printing and the support structures are going to add little nubs to those areas so we actually want to delete those. So we're done with the manual adjustments and we're now going to do our slicing. So we're going to go ahead and slice. And once uh, the slicing is complete, the software is going to save that on your computer. It's going to sl save the slice file. So once that's, that slicing is done and it saves the slice file, uh, we can then send it to the printer. So you can see the slicing process happening right now. Is, this usually doesn't take very long. So one of the nice things about the Accurate Assault is that it's pretty much a plug and play printer. To start to print, you make sure that the build platform is secure. Fill the resin tank with the resin that you want to print the model in. In this case, we're printing a temporary hybrid using Nextend MFH temporary uh, resin. So we're going to fill that to the fill line. There's actually a measurement line in the tank itself, depending on how much uh, or how large the, the model you're printing. You, there are two different uh, lines. And then we're ju just going to hit the file name on the touch screen, which has been transferred over to Wi-Fi from the Alpha 3D software to the printer. Here we'll see a little bit of a closer view of that touch screen. We see the file name there in the queue. We hit print. Uh, it'll show you a visual representation of the model and then you can just start to print from there. And of course, it's gonna ask you also to verify the print. This particular model uh, took about 40 minutes to print and you can see the printer is gonna start. Typically you wouldn't have the, the um, cover open like this, but for this time-lapse video, I left it open so we could see the printer in motion. So the, the platform is not going to be moving up and down quite as fast as you see in this video. This is sped up, I believe, 20 times normal speed. So as I was saying about the printer, it's a pretty straightforward, easy to use printer. Comes uh, pre-calibrated. You have to put the tank in and the build platform. But once those are in and you plug the printer in, connect it to your Wi-Fi, it's pretty much ready to go. Um, the resins are pre-calibrated by Accureta, so there's no resin calibration that needs to be done also. And it's a pretty fast printer. One of the wonderful things about this printer is that it is great for same-day uh, prosthesis. So, for example, in a case where we're doing an all-on-X situation where we're putting in, you know, four, five, six implants, and once the implants go in, we can actually scan the patient using photogrammetry or an intraoral scanner. Not as accurate as photogrammetry, but there are ways to get around that. And if we have the file or the prosthesis already designed, we can transfer the positions of the new implants into that file in Exacad from the scans, uh, the post implant placement scans and then uh, fit the tie, the uh, either tie bases, or in this case, we're going direct to MUAs, but we can fit um, the, the prosthesis directly to the implants now um, using Exocad. 
or some other similar software, um, and then output an STL file that we, we can print on the sole in less than an hour, do our post-processing, staining, et cetera, and have that uh, prosthesis ready for delivery same day. So here you can see the printer's finished printing. Again, it wouldn't be printing this fast. This is again, a time-lapse video. But once this is done, we can remove it from the build platform, do the post-processing, and deliver this hybrid to the patient. This can be done also for temporary crown and bridges, et cetera. So that's one of the beautiful things about this printer is the speed. Now that the print is complete, we can remove the build platform by unscrewing the build platform screw and inspecting the print to make sure that everything is there. We're ready now for post-processing. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we, at this point, we'd just like to thank our friends on Facebook Live for joining us. Uh, we will stop that now, and the Q&A will move over to Livestorm. So please go over to Livestorm and do register. So thank you to everyone for joining us. We would like to open the platform now for your questions. We have about 20 to 30 minutes of Q&A. We've uh, seen some very nice questions on the, on the platform, and please keep them coming. So, uh, while Julia gets ready for our first question, I will start with one here, throw it out. Ayush, can they use th a third-party resin? Absolutely. You know, right now we've calibrated over 100 third-party resins, and uh, we have another 50 more to be done before the end of this year. So, that's a grand total of 150 this year alone. Excellent. And Excellent. Okay, uh, we will wait for some more questions. Um, while, while we do that, another question for you, Ayush. Uh, where can they buy Curo resins? Curo resins could be bought from you know, some of the dealers that we have in over 75 countries. And aside from that, uh, from our eShop, in case we don't have a partner servicing uh, those resins in that particular country. Okay. All right, we shall take a few questions from Jose. Please give us a question. All right, very happy to be here today. Um, the first question for you guys is from Andre Fook. He's saying, what is the influence of post-curing on final part properties, dimensions, mechanical, and color? So what is the influence on, of post-processing on the quality of the print? Okay, I will give that technical one as far as you should It's well. an excellent question, I must say. So um, a little lesser known fact is that 80% of the curing done in a 3D print process with polymers is at the post-cure station. And only 20% of the curing is actually done uh, on the printer. So since it's uh, you know, a large percentage with 80%, most of your mechanical properties your biological properties in terms of safety, biocompatibility, irritation, uh, and others according to different ISO testing standards are basically given by the validated post-cure process. So I would say that uh, very important. Uh, so a follow-up on that, Ayush, would it, would it be safe to say that uh, the UV box is the most important, most important or one of the most important steps 
in 3D printing dental applications. It is unusual, but actually the UV box may be even more uh, important than the printer itself. And uh, as I mentioned, it's a lesser known fact and not many people are talking about it. So really good question. Okay, we take another question. All right, so the next question comes from Ryan Ringo. He's asking, what is the estimated maximum working hours of the LCD for the soul? What is the maximum working, what is the lifetime of the LCD screen on the soul printer? So the LCD screen on the soul printer, as you have heard, is a monochrome. Monochrome versus RGB, RGB is color. Monochrome does less damage to the LCD because of the technology. So we say it can last up to 10,000 hours, depending on how you use it and uh, other reasons. So it's stated as up to 10,000 running hours. Great. So the next question is from Spyros Aninos. He's asking if the users can use uh, third-party resins on their printers and if it's free. Third party question, we, we had that in the beginning. We'll just uh, elaborate a bit on that. Uh, so we control the quality of the resins in our ecosystem. We don't want just any old resin from any old place because that would just be crazy, right? You'd have a thousand resins and you cannot control the quality of the ecosystem. So we are partnered with some of the biggest resin material brands in the world, Bago, to name it, Bago, a few others, Ayush? Yeah, I would say all the popular companies uh, from all around the world because our ambition was to ensure that we're able to provide materials for every market uh, that requires certification. So, for example, from US, uh, Keystone, Whipmix, Dentka, Nextdent, they all have the FDA certifications. And in Europe, uh, there are a lot of German companies like, you know, Dentona, there's Shera, um, there's DMG, there's Voco, there's Strauman Group. They all have resins uh, with EU certifications. So uh, the short answer would be that, look, we have all the third party resins that are pre-calibrated. And what's different is we don't just keep the system open. We as a manufacturer have taken the responsibility, including the legal responsibility to do the calibration for those resins on an entire workflow. And that means that it's not just we've uh, said, here's the setting, use it. It's actually gone through a legal process according to ISO standards with the entire workflow, including the cleaning, the curing, and the software. So yes, it is validated. And because of that third party integration and validation, the users don't need to second guess the settings that are on there. Now, um, if the question would be that, are you allowed to, um, you know, calibrate uh, resins on your own. We've kept that, you know, not very open because it's not something every user can do. And from a legal standpoint, uh, it is unsafe that a user makes his own workflow that may not be validated according to uh, the ISO or the FDA or the CE guidelines. Um, so I would say that's, um, yeah, um, my two cents on, or maybe a bit more than two cents, on third-party materials and validated workflows. Yeah, okay, uh, another question from our friends. We have one more question uh, from Soy Kolbing. She's asking, what is the accuracy of your model and surgical guide geometries in quantitative terms? models and surgical guides in terms of if in quantitative terms quantitative, quantitative terms. terms oh that's a tough one Are you actually it's a, it to... it's a very good question i like hearing questions like this so uh, typically in terms of our uh, validated workflow process we only certify a material if it can show us a plus minus 80 percent accuracy within a sorry an 80% accuracy within a plus minus 100 micron range. Therefore, what we do is we print the part, which is post-cured, and after printing it, we compare it with the STL file and do a mesh overlap. And 
in that process, if we see an 80% or above match within the 100 micron range, then we consider it to be of a clinical standard. And we've been performing such experiments for years. And we can safely say that uh, is enough for those specific applications such as models and surgical guides. Okay, are there any more questions uh, for us? Okay, we'll take it to the cards. Um, question, do I need to complete a course to be proficient using Alpha 3D? So the question basically is, is it very complicated? Is it like a design software where I really need training, hours and hours and hours of training? Well, the short answer is no. We've designed our system to be plug and play. We want someone to take it out of the box who has not used this before even. Um, and the, the, the software, we've taken all of the technical decisions out of the software. So no one is thinking what is 0.5 parameter of this and that. It's done extremely user friendly. Uh, you simply click fast, slow, fine, smooth, go, application, resin, and that's it. So no, you do not need special training for Alpha 3D, but we're always available to train those who need more uh, training on the software. One thing I would like to just add on what Jacques just mentioned is with regard to Alpha 3D, um, what we believe is different in Alpha 3D is very simple. Most of the other CAM softwares in the market today were designed for technicians. And a technician is somebody who has a lot of uh, knowledge on figuring out problems or using non-ideal workflows. But when you look at a clinician, you look at uh, uh, you know, a dentist, they usually uh, not, let's say, uh, as technically sound as a technician because um, in, in terms of their practice, it's more about dealing with the patients. Therefore, uh, it's not the most enjoyable thing for the average dentist to play with the CAM software. Therefore, the way the CAM software has been designed uh, is basically to ensure that any dentist could learn that software in you know, a few hours and be yeah. able to start printing out of the box. So what is that uh, saying that you always say, uh, Yush, there's, there's more money made in, in, the, mouth in the mouth than, than outside, outside the mouth. The mouth. So <laughs> that's uh, the motto that we have built our business model around. Uh, so how are we doing for time there? Some more questions? Okay, I think we have a few on that card. Okay, so we've got a good question about what's the production cost and time for an average dental application on the sole. So it's quite an interesting one that um, today we can produce a, a permanent crown from a material like Bago for less than $2 a tooth. And a tooth like that could be produced, an uh, individual crown, in less than 30 minutes uh, with a product like the Soul. So, you know, just imagine that we're able to run an uh, entire workflow from the design uh, to producing a permanent crown and placing it in the patient's mouth in give or take an hour. Um, and send them out the door. So uh, very economical. Now, even for the all on four case that Dr. Ferguson presented, um, you know, again, that uh, in terms of material cost, you're looking at $4 maximum. And in terms of time, he printed it in a range of 40 to 45 minutes, I would say. So yeah, uh, most dental applications we are able to do on the sole in under an hour. And all dental applications are usually between two and $4 a piece. So please keep those questions coming. Um, I think we have one more. Please, Jose. Sure. Robert City is asking, what is the difference between Sol and Gentik? It's a good one. OK, so there are many differences. But uh, in a nutshell, the, uh, the Dentic is our entry level printer. The Sol is the premium printer. Dentic is an RGB printer. So it's a color printer. On the screen here, you can see a snapshot of the differences. The sole is faster. The build platform is slightly bigger. Um, the resolution on them is both very good. And um, yeah, we've, uh, we've laid it out there. Pretty simple for everyone to see. So, any other questions from our friends? I think we might have another one on that card, Ayush, while, while we wait. 
We have one. We have one. We have one more. Yes. Um, let's see. Ryan Oringo is asking, what is the difference between free shape and soul? Now. What's the difference between free shape and soul? So it's better just to focus on the difference between the dentic and the soul. It's fairly similar between the dentic and the free shape. Okay. Uh, there's another one. Ganesh Nayak is asking, what is the difference? What is the material used for permanent crown? What, okay. is the per, what is the material usage for permanent crown? Well, I would say there's two materials that we find in the market currently that are certified uh, for permanent crown uh, restorative applications. The first one is from Bego, and they have one called Crown. Uh, it, it's Varseo Crown and Crown Plus. So that's a really good material from our findings. The second one is from Saremco Dental. Uh, it's out of Switzerland. Uh, it's a little lesser known, but actually the quality is right up there uh, with the Bego materials. It's called Saramco Crown Tech. So these are the only two materials that we know which have uh, uh, certifications in the market uh, for permanent restorative applications. Super, let's keep them coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One more, here we go. There's one more from Adam Novalija. He's asking, will you change the RGB to monochrome on all models? Uh, no, for the Dentic, well, it's possible for the Dentic, but uh, we've, we've engineered all of the advantages into the sole. So we find that the, it fits a nice niche. Uh, the market uh, segmentation there is, is right. The, the Dentic is a fab fabulous uh, piece of hardware. The, the difference between monochrome and, and color there is not really the main thing that decides on the quality and the performance of the unit. So uh, we have things coming out. We're constantly innovating. So, uh, but yeah, the industry is is tending towards monochrome. That is the the future we believe in uh, in this in this industry. <laughs> No more questions. So I think we've uh, reached the end of our session. Two more questions? <laughs> Playing charades. So we have a second session uh, coming on a little bit later. Um, yeah, so we have another one coming on in about three to four hours, I believe. Uh, so we, we have on that session, we'll have Rick Ferguson line to answer questions we have another question please jose we have one one last question we're almost the last question georgio trifonov it's asking is it possible to change the curing settings is it possible to change the curing settings okay for the soul uh not really we would prefer that you don't because we've we control the entire ecosystem for the dentique Yes, it's open. The users can change the settings, but not for the soul. And I would just like to add one point. Uh, the reason behind our thinking is uh, with the Dentic, um, a user, you know, the machine is a little less sensitive. So basically, if the curing time is 12 seconds uh, for an optimal curing time, and the user finds a calibration in 13 seconds, it doesn't affect the performance as much. However, in the soul, uh, the power of the machine is about five to six times more than a dentique. And with that much power, if uh, the user chooses a setting which is 0.2 seconds off, uh, the result is suboptimal and may not reach the accuracy standard that I was speaking about a bit earlier. Therefore, um, it's not the easiest thing for a user to uh, calibrate a high power printer like the soul. Um, and for that reason, we've kept it uh, a bit away from the users to not calibrate it. All right, we have one more question here from again from Ganesh. He's asking to if it's possible to leave your solution, your resins, uh, in the printer after finishing printing and then reuse it later at a later time. As long as you don't shine direct sunlight on it, or you don't have, uh, you know, your environment is is well maintained, it shouldn't be an issue. 
Absolutely. I would just recommend keeping the cover of the machine uh, closed, uh, whether it's our printer or any printer. As long as you do that, it's okay. Um, at least with our solutions, it's absolutely fine to leave it over the long holidays or a long weekend and come back and plug and print. That's what we probably so We do advise people to buy more than one or two vets. It uh, definitely makes sense to have one vet for each resin and keep it in a nice little secure little uh, drawer or something like this. We have one more question here. This one is from uh, Pim Poldervart. He's asking, what is the key indicator why I should go for an accurate assault and not for a competitor? What do you have to say for that? Oh, that's, uh, we don't have time for that answer, to be honest. No, uh, <laughs> come on, look at us. Uh, look at what you've seen today. It's a fantastic unit. I mean, I think the performance and what you've seen from Dr. Rick Ferguson speaks for itself. Of course, there's lots of good products in the market. Uh, there's different types of needs. There's different types of budgets. There's uh, different types of bundles, yes. you know, um, finishing kits, resins. There's a lot of factors that go into, um, you know, where and how you buy your, uh, your solution. I mean, we have a fantastic dedicated dental 3D printing tech support group. Uh, we have one of the fastest turnarounds for support in the world. Uh, you know, you won't get some, some person in the faraway country who's only had experience on hobby printers. You'll get a dedicated uh, professional here when it comes to dental support. Um, you know, we, we're, we're, we're kind of a boutique company that's growing fast. We have uh, an excellent marketing department. So all these things, I think, are a reason why you should go with Accurita. All right, good. One question. From Georgil Trifonov, he's asking if it's possible to request a calibration of some resins that they need to use, you know, resins that are not uh, pre-calibrating sure. the printer as well. So we do that. We do uh, evaluate every, any request that comes in. If it's a, a decent uh, material and we don't see it being a problem, uh, patient safety is our main concern. Yes. So we do evaluate yeah. that and we do do that. We do constantly look at resins for validation. So I think uh, we've pretty much answered most of the questions. Yeah. We have one more, I believe. <laughs> wow. I like this. I can do this all day. <laughs> OK, here we go. All right. Next question. This one is from uh, E to Holstein. He's asking, how long is the printer time, for example, for I got it printed from next gen surgical guide material? Uh, okay, so how long to print a surgical guide using a next gen uh, SG resin? Um, well, the short answer is I would say 45 minutes is a good benchmark, um, depending on the guide. Of course, a larger guide would be closer to one hour. And we've seen certain smaller guides even being done in 30 to 35 minutes. So rather quick and perfect for same day. So I want to thank everyone again for joining us. Uh, it's been a fantastic experience. Yeah. So if you're around in three or four hours, join us for the next one. If there's some more information that you wanted to get out of this. So thank you all for joining us. And uh, we really hope to see you for the next webinar. Excellent. Thank you all. See you then. Bye -bye. Ciao. Bye.
una manera automática, es decir, que lo que tú estás realizando alguna otra actividad, perfectamente Kini puede estar trabajando sin quitarte más tiempo del laboratorio o de tu Y bien, aquí estamos desempacando a Sol. El momento esperado en el consultorio. El sol nos ofrece grandes beneficios y esto es que te permite tener resultados en el mismo día de trabajo, en tu mismo día que estás viendo al paciente, ya que a comparación de otras impresoras, LCD tiene tres veces mayor rapidez y mayor exactitud en la impresión, además de que tiene un píxel de 48 micrómetros, entre otras bondades, muchísimas más que puedes encontrar en la página de Acurera. Así que vamos a levantar y vamos a conocer. Esta es nuestra área de impresión. Aquí es donde vamos a estar colocando toda la, la resina con la que vamos a estar trabajando según lo, lo que tú quieres eh, manejar en tu consultorio. Y bueno, la verdad es de que vamos a estar trabajando, que quiero trabajar rápidamente ya con Cure Explain, con Cure Model y por supuesto con Cure Attempt para ver las restauraciones provisionales a largo plazo. Así que muchísimas gracias y estén al pendiente. everyone, please join us for a fantastic webinar, Solutions to the Five Most Common Problems in Dental 3D Printing. We have two very exciting guests. Ayush Bagla, founder and CEO of Accurated Technologies, and Dr. Rick Ferguson, implant educator out of the US. Dr. Rick Ferguson will be going through a guide creating in-house hybrids. Hope to see you soon. Willkommen bei AccuWeather. Schaltet ein am 15. September für ein Webinar ganz um das Thema den Thaler 3D-Druck und die fünf größten Probleme. Unser CEO Ayush Bagla und Dr. Rick Ferguson aus den USA werden dabei sein. Verpasst es nicht und klickt auf den Link hier oben, um euch anzumelden. Wir sehen euch dann. Hi everyone, please join us for a fantastic webinar. Solutions to the five most common problems. Ayush Bagla, founder and CEO of Accurated Technologies, and Dr. Rick Ferguson, educator out of the US. Dr. Rick Ferguson will be going through a guide to creating in-house hybrids. We hope to see you soon. Willkommen bei Accurated. Schaltet ein am 15. September für ein Webinar.